So here is my 30 week bump. I seriously feel like Erin has doubled in size in just a couple days time because this thing feels absolutely gigantic right now. Hi guys, so today I have my 30 weeks pregnant update for you. We're covering weeks 29 and 30. And I've actually been considering doing weekly updates from here on out. If you guys are interested in that, please let me know down below if that sounds like a good idea or if you're okay with the every two weeks thing. Just let me know what you guys think down the below in the comments. Um, it's just kind of, you know, I'm having more appointments lately and so like, there's kind of more things to like update you guys on. So I went to the maternal fetal medicine office today, this afternoon, and I learned some things. If you guys watched my last video, you know that I was on a little bit of a diet, trying to really watch my carbs and sugars and that sort of thing to see if it would help with my amniotic fluid levels and it sounds like it's pretty much done nothing. <laughs> My fluid levels have come down a little bit, but they were measuring at like 25.3 and they say anything over 25 is still in the not good range. So they're going to have me come back next week to check them again and maybe every week for a little while to keep an eye on them. So that's kind of crappy that the diet didn't help in that aspect. I was really hoping that it would because my, my gestational diabetes test came back fine. Everything was fine with that. And that's what they were thinking the issue was. The same thing happened last time when I was pregnant with Calvin and it turned out my the diabetes test was fine there too. So I thought I would just take it upon myself to watch my carbs and see if that helped. And it looks like it has not. <laughs> my She did say that my fluid levels were a little lower than before, but I didn't get the number last time. So I'm not sure exactly how much lower, um, but they're still in the high range. Baby Aaron is measuring right at four pounds, which is actually a little less than I was anticipating because if I went by like how much Calvin was gaining at this point, he should have been like four and a half at least. So it sounds like at least the last couple weeks, Aaron is a little bit smaller than Calvin was at least at this point. So that's kind of exciting. The idea of having like a normal size baby is very intriguing because I'm trying, I really want to have a VBAC this time. I want to be able to deliver vaginally and not have to have another C-section. And if he's not a 10 pound baby, it's probably going to be a little bit easier to not end up with a C-section. My midwife said at last week's appointment that if he were over like eight pounds, 12-ish ounces or something, that it would probably be looking like a c-section and so since calvin was eight pounds six ounces at 37 weeks last time i was kind of worried that maybe aaron would be bigger if we go a little longer this time so that kind of stuff has all been floating around in my head lately just a lot of different things about how it's all going to end up in the end i have come to terms with the fact that i might end up with a c-section if he's looking gigantic we might just go that route but I really, really, really want to be able to at least try for a vaginal delivery this time. Like I said, Aaron's right at four pounds right now and I feel like he's like five pounds at least. <laughs> I just feel like my belly is enormous. Like lately, like just laying on my back for um, maybe five minutes watching TV, I just feel like my belly is so heavy and putting so much pressure on my back that it's just, I can't do it. And I know that they, you know, they advise you to stay away from laying on your back for extended periods of time, especially while you're sleeping and stuff like that. But it was never an issue with Calvin. That, I never had a problem laying on my back with Calvin. But this time around, my belly just feels so, so heavy. <laughs> like, it's so heavy <laughs> that it's uncomfortable and I don't feel right and I don't feel safe laying like that. I have felt like my energy is just like crap lately. I want to take a nap like pretty much every day. If Calvin takes crappy naps and I don't get to like put a nap in there while he's napping, it's just like super sad for me. <laughs> like today, uh, I actually had my mother-in-law watch him while I went to the doctor's appointment. And when I returned, it's like, I got no break today because I was out doing things while you were napping. I didn't get to nap while you napped. <laughs> and that's like really sad to me. <laughs> I don't even know, I don't even want to imagine what it's going to be like when the newborn is here because you know they're not going to be sleeping at the same time and it's going to be really difficult. <laughs> but at least I won't have the pregnancy hormones to make me like want to sleep all the time like I do right now, right? Now I have kind of changed up my diet a little bit. That first week I was 
really limiting my carbs. I was, I would definitely call it a low carb diet that I was on that first week and I lost a little bit of weight and I didn't feel good about that. So I switched it around to just be very carb conscious and I try to keep it around 150 grams a day or so to just watch what I'm doing, not like super try to limit every single carb. Like I don't, I don't try to adjust each meal to like eliminate the carbs like I did in that first week. Now I just watch what I'm eating and adjust my other meals. Like if I'm having breads and stuff for dinner, I will eat like salad and greens and stuff for lunch, you know, just kind of balance it throughout the day. Um, and so since I've changed that, I haven't gained or lost any weight. I've been very stagnant for the two weeks. So the first week I was very, very strict, lost some weight. And then for the two weeks after that, I was just kind of more conscious of my carb intake and I was very stagnant in my weight gain or loss. And so I feel better at this point to just be watching my carbs and have the weight gain kind of just like trail off. It's just kind of plateau, I guess you would call it. And my midwife did mention it last week that I had lost some weight since the last appointment. She didn't really make a big deal about it. That's pretty much all she said about it. But she did tell me that it was a good idea to limit my sugars, especially because Aaron is looking so big and my amno amniotic fluid levels are so high. So. She has told me to limit sugars especially. I'm keeping all carbs in check lately. So at least for the next week, I'm going to continue watching my carbs to see if my fluid levels look any better at my next week's check if they get lower than that 25 mark, which is where I really want to be. You know, I'm like just barely over it. And if I can get under that, then I will be considered more in the normal range. So hopefully it helps a little bit at least. Now, I have mentioned before that I've been doing like yoga ball exercises every night, kind of like opening up my hips, and it's really, really helped with my hip pain and my lower back pain. But this past week, I've still been doing that. I've still been doing it every night before bed. I've been kind of less good feeling in my hips. It's definitely not that they feel bad. They don't feel anything like they did back before Christmas, before I started doing all the yoga ball stuff every night. They don't feel that bad at all, no way. But they just don't feel as good as they had been. So it could just be, you know, time progressing, belly's getting bigger, baby's getting bigger, things just weigh more and things are off balance and stuff like that. So it could just be, you know, just a part of pregnancy or I need to start doing more yoga ball stuff. Maybe I need to do it in the morning and in the evenings. So I'm thinking about trying to add a little bit more in there to see if that helps my hips. Just the past couple weeks, they've been not as good as they have been. As far as just other symptoms go, I had a few days this week where I felt like I literally got punched in the pubic bone. Like the bone itself felt like it was aching and it was just a couple days, it was kind of weird, you know, not, not like all the time, but I think it started overnight and it was very uncomfortable to sleep because every which way I turned, every time I turned over, you could like really feel it. Like it, that's what it felt like. It felt like somebody punched my bone. <laughs> it was just like was super achy and sore, but it's fine now. So that was just a couple days of weirdness. I have been getting some lightheadedness lately. Um, I actually, when I did my gestational diabetes test, they found out that I was borderline anemic. I think she said anything under 10 was uh, considered anemic and I was like 10 point something and so she recommended that I start taking iron pills and I have been doing that but I'm still getting kind of lightheaded. She was saying that having anemia could lead to lightheadedness and so it's not really helping. <laughs> like ever since I found out that I was close to being anemic it feels like the lightheadedness has been more so that's kind of weird. It's not like an excessive thing it's just every once in a while randomly throughout the day I might get one little wave of it. Um, not a big deal. I think I remember that with Calvin too. I know I had it a lot in the beginning with Calvin. I think I just had it a little bit at the beginning with Aaron and I'm pretty sure it came back at the end with Calvin too. So sometimes these symptoms just come full circle. I've totally noticed that when I was pregnant with Calvin. Like the morning sickness came back around like maybe 35 weeks with Cal. I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> And it has been kind of hard to catch my breath sometimes. Sometimes I just feel like I can't get like a really good deep inhale. So the baby is definitely invading all my space. <laughs> and lastly, I have felt an increase in hunger lately. Um, I felt like I was pretty much very normal, like almost pre-pregnancy the last several weeks, but the past week or so, I have felt like 
the super hungriness has returned. <laughs> I don't know exactly. It's not like I'm starving all the time, but I just feel like I need more of a snack in between my big meals. Like at work, mid morning and mid afternoon, I'm like, dude, I need something more than just a cheese stick or, you know, a fruit cup or whatever. Like I need some real food right now. <laughs> and I've been feeling like that the past week or so, just kind of off and on. So I think I remember that with Calvin as well. Once again, just like, the like coming around of the symptoms things that happen in the first trimester start happening again in the third trimester and that's just kind of how it is at least that's how i've experienced it with calvin and this time around with aaron so that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed today's video once again let me know if you want to see these weekly or if you're cool with the every other week thing let me know down in the comments below we're 30 weeks, we're only 10 weeks away, you know, I'm, I hopefully it's less than 10 weeks, but not, not like a couple weeks, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go too early, but I don't really want to go all the way until April either. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did like it, and I will talk to you next time.